Well, here we are again, week two of isolation, and Pastor James has asked me to put together another short lesson to share with you. Uh, this lesson is going to be a comparison between overachievers and overcomers. So the definition of overachievers is to is uh, the overachievers are individuals who perform better or achieve more success than expected. The implicit presumption is that the overachiever is achieving superior results through excessive labor and effort. For example, when I was a child, I was uh, grew up in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and we, uh, we were exposed to all of the efforts of NASA and the space program and all. Um, and we were all enthralled with this race to space and to the moon. <clears throat> Many of the many of the achievements that that uh, were accomplished during those years have been put into uh, movies and films, and they highlight the the achievements of men and women in this space program, um, the great endeavor to reach into outer space and to get it done before the Russians did. Uh, films like The Right Stuff, Hidden Figures, First Man, Apollo Thirteen, all these films document the lives and achievements of some of the world's brightest scientists, mathematic mathematicians, firefighters, and also some of the most um, determined individuals ever to walk this planet. All the people involved in, these, in this space program were overachievers, in my mind, performing better and achieving success through superior effort and talent. And as President Kennedy stated, we choose to do these things not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Now, looking at all these individuals today and seeing them through the eyes of this old man, it amazes me that so many of these people were so young and they had achieved so much in their short lifetime. And then I ask myself, what have I achieved in all the years that I've been around? my achievements actually pale in comparison to those of those of uh, the scientists and the astronauts who were employed in this great endeavor. So then we look at the word overcoming. Uh, to overcome means to get the better of, uh, in a struggle, in a conflict, to conquer, to defeat, to overcome the enemy, to prevail over, to surmount, to overcome one's weaknesses, to overpower or overwhelm the body or mind, as in um, substance abuse. The substance abuse, the substance actually overcomes the, uh, the willpower of the individual. And then a person who overcomes something, one who succeeds in dealing with or gaining control of some problem or difficulty or weakness. So you have overcome, overachievers versus overcomers. Now, interestingly... The scriptures never mention the word achieve, but they do mention the word overcome some 30 times. Most importantly, in the book of Revelation, God promises to reward those who overcome some aspect of their spiritual life or situation. Uh, in Revelations chapter 2 and 3, there is one church that was mentioned they had left their first love, which was God. In, in one church, Satan had an influence in them, and God wanted them to overcome that influence. There were influences of false doctrines and lukewarm attitudes. In the seven churches listed, all are given the promise of a reward if they would but overcome the opposing forces and their own spiritual weaknesses. In fact, they were told to overcome. Jesus taught in Mark chapter Eight, verses 35 through 37 it says for whosoever will save his life shall lose it and whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels the same shall save it and then he says for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul gain the whole world or even the moon and lose his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul in other words, what is more valuable to you than your own soul? So it seems quite obvious that God isn't as interested in our uh, worldly achievements. He's not impressed with our worldly achievements 
as he is interested in our desire and our ability to overcome our own sinful, carnal nature and spiritual and moral weaknesses. Indeed, God never seems to care much about what we have achieved in this life if it's not coupled with our diligently seeking him and our effort to overcome the enemy of our soul, which includes our own lusts and pride. In this time of imposed social distancing and isolation, we are confronted with the truth that we are charged indeed to save ourselves from this untoward generation. Truly, as far as my salvation goes, if it is to be, it's up to me. Because I can't, because I can't regularly meet with my brothers and sisters in the church, I now realize that my salvation is one that only I can work on. It's always been that way, but the truth has been brought to light in a more poignant way nowadays, more real. It has been said of old that your true self emerges when you are all alone and no one else is watching you. Individually, the world has never been more alone than it is right now. This world has seen a few times when social catastrophes have occurred, prompting social distancing. Uh, 9-11, for instance, uh, the deadly Ebola virus that broke out in Africa a few times. Once, was it, I think it was just last year, um, World War II imposed some social distancing, distancing in some countries. But never has mankind been forced into self-isolation like we have been these past few weeks. And how are we doing spiritually? Are we still as in love with God as we were just a few weeks ago? Are we staying faithful to his words and commandments now, now that no one is watching us closely as before? Or are we glad for the opportunity to stay home on Sunday morning without conviction or guilt for missing church services? Are we still pursuing God at the highest level? This isolation sets a new landmark of governmental control, the likes of which we have never seen before in this country or around the world. But the bigger subject matter is, how are we all doing spiritually? Are we staying faithful to God and his word? In these times, it is brought to light that we are, uh, uh, it's brought to light what we are, and what we have become. When, when we are faced with this particular situation, we can ask ourselves, what have I become? Oftentimes people talk about how they've been too busy to do this or do that, or too busy to read their Bible, too busy to spend time praying. And in, in, in that case, what have we become because of that? Well, personally, I can see aspects of my life that need greater consecration to God. Love of the fellowship, uh, spending time with the brethren, to be a doer of the word and not hear only. To be a doer of the word and not a hearer only has been brought to the forefront and we are now able to see more clearly what we have become and what we might need to get busy at correcting in our lives and doing it until Jesus comes. Is this a wake-up call? A wise man might say so, but if it's not a wake-up call, the wise man will certainly take advantage of the opportunity to refocus on his preparations for eternity. Jesus is coming soon, and he's coming for those who have made themselves ready. Take this opportunity to refocus your efforts to draw closer to God because he is because there may not be another one like it. This world is not worth it to me if I lose my own soul. Overachievers versus overcomers. Well, we need now to understand that we have to be overcomers more than overachievers. We have to be able to say that we have overcome. And Jesus said, that the, the words that you want to hear are, well done, 
thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joys of the Lord. And we all want to hear those words spoken to us when we stand before God in judgment. And we, we make the transition from this life into the next. Hope everyone stays safe and healthy. Most of all, hope everyone stays spiritually alert and continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of God and in the Word of God. God bless you, and hopefully the next time we'll see you in church.